Hello everyone and welcome back to Claintain Zoo and today we're just doing a little tour so nothing new well some of the exhibits got some new species so I guess that's new and a few touch-ups in some areas but nothing majorly new today's just a tour because I figured we're 20 episodes in so we might as well do a tour so if anyone wants is new to the series haven't watched a previous episode or don't want to go back and watch one of binge watch the old ones although I will recommend you do uh, you can just watch the series because I'll go through everything and explain the story behind them all or if you want you can take a look with your own eyes because this is all available on uh, the steam workshop so you can go down below in the description and go go into your own planet zoo game and tour this yourself because it is uh, available there. But yeah, to anyone that's new to the series, this is Claintain Zoo. It's my own historic South African zoo. Likely placed in what's today called the Eastern Cape Province. Probably near Port Elizabeth, or what was once called Port Elizabeth. Especially since most of these buildings reflect are from based on Port Elizabeth, which I'll show in a bit. But yeah, this is also a timeline zoo. And the way I explain that is... um. Essentially, each progress update reflects a few years progress in the zoo, so I think the first progress update was 1989 and back then, like if you go check the earlier videos or on the Steam Workshop as well, I do have some older versions of the map, so I think on the workshops 1989, 1916 I think, or 1915, 1924 and of course 1933, which is what we're doing now, that's the current year. Yeah, if you go back then, you'll see that this entire map is empty, there's no zoo, there's just a few small cages of hoofstock over here. But yeah, you can, over time, with each progress update, we add something else, added stuff, occasionally we remove stuff. So in the future, this will look, this area will probably look very different. This whole map, actually, will probably look very different as we add and remove stuff. So, yeah. So currently, the year is 1933, and I am going to give a tour of this place. So... If you look down below, you'll see that there are certain timestamps. There's like the intro, which is what I'm doing now. There, then I'll probably divide it into three sections of me touring. So the city over here, the zoo itself, and then finally the estate back here. And I think at the end, I'll give a little bit of a breakdown into the process that goes behind planning this. I'll show you my plans that I had for creating the zoo, and you can see how much those plans have deviated. From what you see here and also maybe explain what I want to do in the future yeah if there's any section you just want to skip or you want to watch this in increments because I imagine this is going to be a pretty long video since I'm looking at everything then yeah you can just use the timestamps to help you out there but anyway let's start the tour yeah so we will start off our tour in front of this amazing church that Haribo made for me so yeah, I asked Haribo if he could make a church. It is based on a real life church. I don't know what the church's name is. I'll put a picture on screen now. And yeah, Haribo made this church for us and came out really, really well. He's an, he's an amazing builder. It is available on the workshop. Actually, um, yeah, there's a, a few blueprints that I've made and then stuff other people have used. And I've created a big, like a collection of stuff that I made from the zoo so if any of the blueprint items you want to check out for yourself go down to the description and then you can check the collection and it'll all be there so yeah so this is the church as you can see it's very detailed and I really like it it forms it's a really nice backdrop for this hill something I forgot to actually mention in that episode is that this hill didn't exist before that episode I think 28 was it 20 no not 28 18 or 19 whatever it was this hill didn't exist. Um, if we hop out Teja Camp, this actually used to be a a planted forest here, but I wasn't really enjoying it. I didn't like it. And I was like, it makes more sense to have a hill here, and of course, why not just put a big old church on top of it? So, yeah, that's what I did. So, in case um, you go back to like I think the 1924 update to any of the previous ones, you'll see that there's a forest here, and all of a sudden there's a hill. I'm just gonna pretend that it was always a hill covered in plants like this, but. Yeah, anyway, on with the tour. 
Right, so we'll take a walk down these stairs, the church back there, and head on into this little olden city, which is pretty much based on the city of Port Elizabeth. So, yeah, as we start off here, you can see I got some tram lines in, and of course there's one of the trams. So, yeah, in South Africa for quite a while in most major cities you had trams until like 1940s, so... Yeah, in seven years' time, these trams are all gonna be gone. But for now, they're here to enjoy. We've got a few buildings on this side. If um, I'm not gonna spend too much time going through the city since two episodes ago, I did first show off all the city and I showed off all the buildings in details and all the source pictures and that. So, if you really want to see how the city looks in detail, go check that out. But yeah, as something you also notice also notice on this side is that we got a bunch of uh, ads this is a big old ad wall and I have a whole bunch of names of uh, people whose blueprints I've used or mods I've used or people have just been supportive of the series or I admire so yeah put the, uh, put them in there along with a whole bunch of other nonsense and memes and whatnot so yeah I think it's a uh, if you want to check it out properly, the, the ads and there's a big tram in the way. You can go check out the two episodes previously. I think I I show these off better than I'm doing right now. And or you can just um go with this. oh yeah, download download the map. I don't know, I drew a blank there for a second. Download the map and then there's a Google Drive link where you can download all of these uh, portraits and put it in your user media file and uh, check it out for yourself. Yeah, as you can see, we have a... that was the single-decker tram over there. Yeah, we have a double-decker tram. Yeah, we can actually go up onto the second level, take a seat and carry on with our journey, but unfortunately the, that, that's, these are still trams. It's not an actual in-game vehicle. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, the tram and this car over here, uh, this car, I made these both of them myself, so yeah, they are available on the Steam Workshop for download. This building over here on the right, these two over here, and this one, both of them were made by Salary Wife, I believe, and so yeah, these are all stuff I took, I took off the workshop, this building, this one, and this one. And if we go all the way over the way back here, which is English, can I speak it? You can see that the back side of these buildings are very incomplete. Eventually I do want to slap some windows and that, so it kind of, it just looks complete. I'm not gonna put so a lot of detail in there, but just so, in case you come back here, you don't have to deal with this. But yeah, the reason why I'm walking over here is that we have a park at the back of the this map, and these are some of the older buildings in the map so these will be like an old farm estate and these are some old buildings that have been left here so got some Grondavels here They've been overgrown you can see there's a tree sticking out of this one and ooh, water save and over here we got a a farmhouse they do also have to work on this tree this is supposed to be a an Atal fig tree but I think I can do a better job if I try and make them now yeah, so this is just an old farmhouse, as you can see, overgrown, abandoned, a little bit of concrete left, but mostly dirt. Got a little fireplace there. And eventually it will just, like, degrade it even more. Well, no, I don't think, I think the farmhouse will stay the same, but the roof will definitely, eventually this thing will be roofless. But yeah, keep this as a, as a park, so that way I can at least keep my, this farmhouse I spent a lot of time building. And those things. I don't think it was that long, but I mean, it's an old, it's an old thing. It has sentimental value, so it shall stay. Probably eventually put some jungle gems and whatnot down in this park, so it seems more parky. Put benches and that. But anyway, back to the main road. So turn the corner. We have a few more buildings. These ones I'm, I made this one. And that one, this one was also made by a, uh, the celery wife. 
and that, this one over here is also made by her. But all the other one, these, this one, this one, this one, that one I made. So yeah, we can walk along here. We can see the, the zoo on the other side of the wall. We can see this aviary I made last episode. Just over the wall there. So yeah, so now people walking along the street, they have something to peek into. Maybe they'll see a bird flying and be like, ooh, we need to go visit the zoo. So yeah. This one was also taken off the workshop. I don't remember who made it, but uh, yeah, it will be in the collection. Got another building back here, and we have a view of the uh, this um, the farmhouse, the old abandoned farmhouse. Like I said, if you look down the street, it kind of looks like a complete area, but if we go just beyond this house, you'll see that it is very incomplete, and there's a lot of pebbles on this road. I need to replace the terrain from rock to something else so we don't have this, but yeah. As you can see, I do need to still complete this. A lot of this backstage, the, sorry, not backstage, the backdrop area still needs to be filled out with houses and stuff. It won't be very high detailed, but just so, in case you want to take a walk around here, so it feels like a complete map. But for now, it's just a facade, kind of. So you can look down the street and it looks complete, but as soon as you go down it is incomplete. Is that a rhyme? Did I just make a rhyme? I think I did. Boom, lyrical master. Then as we continue along the street we have another building. This is also taken from the workshop so I think a few of the workshop buildings I'll probably replace. I mean I like this one but this one and that pink one over there it's kind of a different style to all these other ones so eventually I will probably replace them. What my plan is with this this whole area, the city as well, I will replace it with modern buildings. I'll probably take the buildings I don't like very much. So like, uh, I mean, I'm not saying I don't like this one, I'm saying it doesn't fit in, but some of the buildings I made, like, let's see if I can see from here. This one with this little round top, I really don't like this one, so probably replace that with a modern building eventually. Maybe we'll have some brutalist buildings coming in and eventually we'll get some ultra modern buildings and whatnot. And yeah, you can see nicely down the street, we've got some, uh, I, don't, I don't know, houses, I think, back there. So yeah, let's continue along this way. So this is the tram depot, which I'll show in a bit deep, in a bit more, explain a bit more in a bit. Yeah, we've got a little parking lot, a little building here. Another building, this one also don't like, this one's an ugly one. Got some houses in the back there, which eventually will change up. I do want to eventually make them more colorful, but for now I'm thinking it's old times. People, you know, they keep things bland. I think, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, this is the tram station. It's based on an actual um, old tram building. You find in, I think, Port Elizabeth, the Tramsway building. So yeah, for now it's... Uh, Still holding trams and letting them in and out, but yeah, by 1940 it will uh, it will uh, close down. It'll just sit there abandoned for a while, maybe a decade or two, and then I think I'll probably actually incorporate this building into the entrance, turn it into some indoor parking, maybe. But now it's empty; it's completely empty on the inside. But eventually it will get an interior, probably a parking lot, I think. Yeah, where we. Go on, we have some other buildings. You have this one. This one I also really like. Put a lot of detail into this one. It is based on a building. I think it was a post office, if I recall. And yeah. I like how that one turned out. Of course, we have a we have a synagogue over here. This was also based on a building that has been demolished, but uh, I like the old pictures I found of it, so I decided to recreate it. And just another random, uh, I don't know, some kind of complex. And as you can see, uh, the gap there, so I need to put some more buildings and stuff there. It seems more complete. But for now, it's empty, and yeah, I just wanted to get to a point where I could. Where, they, where if you're inside the zoo or walking along this main street, it seems complete. But uh, eventually, I'll get back to that. Right now, I'm, I'm still kind of tired of building this thing because it took like three months to create this. This whole city backdrop. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, kind of tired of creating backdrops, to be honest. So, 
yeah, this is the other side of the tram building. You can see we've got one that's being uh, worked on. And we've got a little shed that was added onto the building. I don't know why you have a shed, but there's a shed. And yeah. Anyway, now that we've toured the uh, the city, the city backdrop, let's move on to the zoo itself. So, first thing I want to address is that you have a whole lot of foliage that over here in the back I'm thinking that they just didn't develop here. Maybe there's a river on the other side or a steep slope, so it's not worth clearing out the foliage since it's not it's not suitable to rain to build stuff, so just leave all the plants here. The real reason is that there's not enough map space to build a building and I'm also lazy, so but we'll stick to the first reason. The terrain is inhospitable. Anyway, if we come over here we have a uh, our parking lot. You can see it's all still dirt. Didn't put a lot of effort into paving this parking lot just yet. Now yeah, we've got a few cars in here. And, uh, yeah, parking lot, I don't know what to say. Then we, can't, we have a little bit of a bus stop here, so eventually, once the trams die, the buses will. Like, I think buses were brought in in favor of trams, but. I think for a brief period you have a, have a bit of an overlap, so yeah, we've got a bit of a bus stop. You can sit here and wait for the buses to come. We've got an angry archer, he's been sitting and waiting for his bus for like about 20 years, maybe. Probably longer. I don't know. <laughs> he's gonna, he's, he's probably gonna be there forever. But anyway, let's go on to the actual zoo, so yeah. This is the entrance of the Claintain Zoo. And right in front of the entrance, we got a, a guy taking advantage of the business opportunities. He's selling monkey nuts. Not those kind of monkey nuts, no, it's just it's nuts that you're supposed to feed to the monkeys. So, come here, buy a bag, and uh, you can see there's some coins in there. That's people, that's how, how they're paid. And yeah, now you can have your nuts, you can go to the zoo feed them to the monkeys, or eat them yourself, we don't judge. Yeah, claim tame so you know you're at the right place. Anyway, now that we're in the zoo, let's go and buy our ticket, we've got two uh, ticket desks. Uh, ooh, oh, oh. Thanks, Tejit Cam. You know, I just realized something when I had to go out there. Uh, we've got, we got these camera effects, so now we can... Uh, Boom, it's black and white, so now we can see it how people actually saw it back in the day. Nah, no, I'm just kidding, I'm not going to do the toy in this style, but... I actually should probably use that for intros and whatnot, but... But anyway, let's go buy our tickets. We have our ticket windows over here. As you can see, there are some eyeballs. I think, I'm thinking out of... I think I was pretending that these are just ticket rolls, so... The staff can just grab a ticket out of them, but... And back then, my graphics card wasn't so great, so... I mean, it didn't look like an actual eyeball back then, but yeah. Probably should replace that with something more believable. Anyway, we buy a ticket. There's also another ticket stand over here. And now we can go explore the zoo. So I think I will do a start on the right side, go all the way around, and come back. So I think that's counterclockwise, yes. Go over here. This is our old female... Uh, flamingo exhibit. Right now it's currently abandoned. The flamingos have been moved to a new exhibit at the back of the zoo, so yeah, it's overgrown. A lot of plants. Part of the pond has moss in it. And yeah. Continue this way. We have our lima exhibit over here. And yeah, they uh, I made sure to unbox them all because they do get boxed a lot here. But yeah, we got our lemurs, got one doing some meditation. Got some others climbing here. One sitting on the rock over there. Yeah, I really like how this exhibit is. It's cool, and uh, yeah, for the cage, this is before we had mesh pieces, so... I used, um... I'm trying to think, it's one of the fence pieces to make this. This one, the new old fence post. I used a lot of them to make that uh, the roofing of this exhibit. 
let's carry on. I actually probably, I think I can remove the the climbing stuff since I have turned off animal escape, so I don't think the lemurs will escape anymore. Uh, I'm actually have to try that out later, but yeah. As we move along this way, we have our owl. So yeah, these are all made by me. You can go check them up in the collection. So the first owl, we have our spotted eagle owl. And uh, this is the second, so the first word will always be in English, and then the second one, if you see another word that's not English, it's Afrikaans. In the future, I do want to have some more signs in more languages, if I can find people to help me translate, but for now, I'll keep, my signs will all have English, and then Afrikaans underneath. So, this is a Noniki Ale. A bar now. Then we're gonna carry on. We have our Eurasian Eagle Owl. And then another cage. Short Yed Owl. See, this one's our Marsh Owls. Yeah. We have him sitting at the, the bottom in the reeds. If you come here, IRL, they'll, pro they'll probably hiss at you. At least when I go to zoos, then there's Marsh Owls. They'll hide in the reeds and hiss at you when you get too close. These are our Veroz Eagle Owl, or formerly known as the Giant Eagle Owl. We got some uh, great. Ooh. Okay, I thought that that looks weird. There's a little dot on the sign. I thought that was spelling a J. It's a great grey owl over here, and lastly we have our grass owls. So, yeah, quick little aviary I made. Uh, and as it, I did replace the thing with mesh. Oh no. I'm, okay, I was afraid I was gonna get stuck again. I replaced the top with mesh as I showed last episode. So now it looks. It looks like a proper aviary. Come over here, we do have some backstage. This is just like some offices. Got some staff parking over here. And I've hidden some buildings in here, so I think we've got like a staff room in the ground. And a trade center and a keeper hut. You can see there's a keeper over here. But anyway, let's move along. We have our gazebo. Probably a really old gazebo, so I should actually put some tables out here so people can actually sit and eat. Otherwise, what's the point of the gazebo? Maybe for functions only, but yeah. Then come over here, and we have our elephant ride. So this is the elephant ride station. The elephant will come in the middle here. Keepers will saddle it up, and then you can hop onto the elephant from here. But uh, yeah, and as you can see, we've got a little bit of a shed back here holding uh, holding some stuff. So these are like the seats and also some hay that you feed the elephants, ropes to tie down, whatnot. The seats onto the elephant. Yeah, this ride station I think is um, based on a picture I saw from Mitchell's Park Zoo. So that's a, a zoo in Durban. Really, uh, and also an old zoo, but today they don't have any elephants or really many big animals. This elephant house is based on the one from Johannesburg Zoo, which is also still, it still stands today. And, uh, of course it doesn't hold the elephants anymore, today it's just a function, but yeah. This is old times, I decided to build that, and we have elephants in here. So, we have Indian elephants, since uh, they're trained, they were brought over from India and they're trained, so you can actually have people ride them. Yeah, they got a nice little pond in the back there, they can go swim in. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, that's like... I have, did have this like elevator thing, so that way guests can actually come and see here. It does have a little gazebo, so I figured this could be like a... a venue of some sort, I don't know, maybe if you're getting married, then you can just... you want to get married at the zoo next to the elephants and... the rhinos on this side, which we put in last episode, then you can. Let's just set up some chairs. Get a priest and yeah, get married at the gazebo. Take an elephant ride afterwards. Anyway, let's go check out the exhibit in more detail. So, uh, and I, I like that you can turn pooping off now because now uh, yeah, this exhibit's a lot cleaner than it was before. I could have just hired more keepers so they can come in and clean the poop actually. But yeah, as you can see, we've got this whole sleeping area. A cage if you want to separate them 
and place where keepers can come and store their food. And yeah. So. This is another way for them to get out if they want, I guess. Right, where to next? Alright, so I figured the next thing to show would be uh, this aviary. This was not made by me, this was made by Lakoshi for me. Now the only thing I did is like, I think I made uh, this, uh, this like, well before it wasn't actually mesh, it was made out of those lattice pieces and then Lakoshi came over and uh, yeah, turned it into this really cool aviary with this like cool kind of cast iron patterns on it. And I really, really like how this has turned out. You did a really great job on this. Yeah, we've got a few birds in here. We've got some woolly neck stalks, firstly. Also made by me, I made a, like a little stalk pack. Got some uh, southern ground hornbills. I could, uh, I, yeah, these need some improvements. I could, I could redo these so they look nicer. The, yeah, currently it's just a circle with some other pieces on top of it. It's not very detailed. Oh, hell, who knows? Maybe eventually we'll get actual birds and I can put actual ground hornbills in here. Then over here, well, the sign is kind of confusing because these are yellow bull stalks, but the sign says wood stalk. So, yellow bull stalks used to be called wood stalks, but today wood stalk refers to another stalk which used to be called an ibis stalk. So, a little bit confusing, so just know that these are yellow bull stalks and wood stalk is their old name. But nowadays wood stalk refers to a completely different kind of stalk, so... Well, not completely different, but it's a different species. And it can be confusing, so... Yeah. As we come along here, we have a little picnic field, as you can see, we've got peafowls in here. This is a one... It's like a big exhibit over here. So now they can all free roam along there. They can also come up here, actually. Yeah, we have our white rhinos, like I showed you earlier. I put them in last episode because we just got the white rhinos, and now we've got like a proper pachyderm area. We've got our elephants, our rhinos, and back there, hippo. So I think, yeah, it's in the water. I had to make this pool a little bit deeper because his back was always like right out of the water, but now it like kind of looks like he's fully, well he is fully submerged but you can still see, see him a bit. I wish he would surface though, like you know, because that's how they would actually behave, you know, every few minutes you just see a hippo head pop out and then it goes back down. Yeah, this is a hippo pool. And uh, you can come along the back here, check the backstage out for this exhibit. I think, when did I pull this? I don't remember, but I remember the story behind the hippo. The hippo was supposed to be temporarily staying at the zoo, but then I think like there was some yeah, I think World War One broke out, so the hippo couldn't be transported, and he stayed here. And then we just made an exhibit for him. So that, yeah, that's the story behind the hippo. Yeah, so we got the shelter over here. Got a big door, sliding door to open for them. Staff can come in here. And what is oh, yeah, this is food. Similar thing on the rhino side. And the rhinos can actually fit and get in here. So, yeah, I'm so glad that we now have proper. Okay, I have actual African rhinos in the game. So, yeah, on with the tour. Let's take a shortcut over this fence. So, yeah, as for the elephant ride, I imagine the ride would come. I think down this pathway, go up here around this bandstand, you can see there's a little bandstand over here, and go down this main road where they'll go back to the, the elephant, uh, what's it called, Just the, dock, the docking station, <laughs> I don't know what it's called, the elephant ride station, sure. But yeah, we're <laughs> elephant docking station. This is the bandstand based on the one that still is up at Johannesburg Zoo. And yeah. Actually, you know what? I think I should uh, change up the weather a bit. Since, like, most of the time I see this, it's uh, 
it's during during sunlight. I really like what the the people do once it starts to get rainy. Let's see. They'll eventually try and find shelter, and what they do is that they'll come and run up and all sit underneath you, which I think is really cool. But yeah, this is the uh, the band sand, as you can see, with a whole bunch of benches. Ooh, they're doing a the fly. That's cool. Are you gonna fly? I'm gonna do a fly. Do a fly. Nope, he, he, he lost it. Yeah, you can see, she went up here. I'm not chilling underneath there, I really like that. I think that's neat. But actually, I think I should turn on random weather, just so... You know, it's not always sunny. Every time I show off the zoo, it's sunny, but we can get some nice, cool, rainy weather in. Yeah, you'll just have bands that will come here and play every weekend, maybe. And guests can just come and sit on the benches. Eventually I do want to remove this fence and these plants and these benches, so you just picnic on the ground here. Like how Johannesburg Zoo has their bandstand now. Yeah, so like I was saying, the elephants on this like heightened area, they'll come all the way around and head back to the station. Yeah, so let's head on up this way. You can see now that we have the city in the background, it really grounds the zoo, it's like, oh, we're, we're still in civilization, this is still, uh, this is like, feels like an actual place more. Come over here, we have, a. Uh, I'll show off this cage first, got some cheetahs, showed this off both this last episode. I've got a pair of cheetahs, this is based on an exhibit from, uh, Victoria Zoo, I think. Just this barn with this little cage over it. There are cheetahs up there. We come along. Here we have an aviary. I showed this earlier on the outside of the zoo. And was last episode. Got some secretary birds made by Labor something. Some uh, vultures made by me. I know a few people said they wanted to see a vulture pack, so I'm still working on that. Will come out eventually. Just uh, haven't been so focused. Got some golden eagles, made by Druck. A few animals I have here have been made by both Druck and Labor something. They made some really cool implied animals. That before we got the... We were able to add new species into the game, so... Yeah, go check, go check those out. Because a lot of the animals they made still don't have mods for. A lot of them are also flying animals. And you can't really make mods for eagles and that, or flighted animals just yet. Not until we get a bird back. Got an angry archer for scale that I forgot to delete, but he'll stay here. Right, so I think it's better if we go up this way, because yeah, everything we'll see up this way will be the same if we go down that way. Actually, there's... I forgot, I put a few new cages. Okay, we'll go back that way in a bit, but I will go up this way for now. But uh, yeah, we've got some grey crowned cranes, part of my crane pack, and we've got some uh, red dacos by... Rock. So yeah, they're just chilling over here, and then I think we got some more dacos in uh, this exhibit. I know it has some uh, stalk. It has a stalk. Yeah, a couple black stalks. Um, I think yeah, here he is with the daker. Then we got a a couple uh, white faced whistling ducks, but I don't think these are supposed to be near, they just decided to land and chill in the pond for a bit. And then, so they're actually wild birds that just decided to take a visit. And over here on this side we have some hoofstock exhibits, we got our sable antelope. You can see there, we got there. And on this side we have our springbok, or springbok, or springbok if you want to mix the two languages. So, the way the staff get in here is that there's a gate behind you. It opens into this, the field area of the park, uh, or the land. And yeah, gate, so you can open and close, let them out, and we've got some stables. Yeah, like we've got some water troughs in the stables, and... Oh, we get a little baby. Cute. 
Oh, yeah, there's an angry Archie here as well that I didn't realize I didn't delete, so. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> let's ignore that. Back on the guest path. Yeah, as you can tell, we got some giraffes, so. In game, these are reticulated giraffes, but realistically, they'd be southern giraffe, since that's the giraffe you find in South Africa. And yeah. And on come back this side, we have uh, some geese. So these are supposed to be domestic grey lag geese. We've got a white stork. Now the geese are part of my waterfowl pack, by the way. White stork, part of my stork pack. We've got a peahen just chilling in here. And we, of course, got our greater flamingos. So, yeah, I like how this exhibit turned out. Like I said, the flamingos and the geese used to be at the front of the zoo, but now they're, they're back here. And I don't know if any of you might recall that in the, when I made this in the, that episode, the eucalyptus wall saplings, like I said, eventually they were going to grow up, so yeah, now they're all, they're all big trees. And since there's no intermediate phase, it's just sapling, boom, big tree. Can't really, uh, you know, there's not really a way to transition that. It's just going to be a big sudden growth with a lot of the trees. Time of, uh, yeah, we can take a... Better look at the flamingos. See, we've got a little island on there. Well, before we check the flamingos out, we've got a few more cages. I added these last episode, so we've got our fennec foxes. This is supposed to be like a little naming tile. It has the names of the animals on there, but yeah. We've got some uh, Lady Amherst pheasants. I think that's the name. I know it's Lady Amherst something. I keep forgetting the, the actual thing. And yeah, we have some green, a green wing macaw. So the macaw and the pheasant was made by Drak as well. Yeah, I like this uh, flamingo exhibit. There is a food thing hidden here, but I don't know if they actually use that to go and eat. But they do spend lots of time in the water, which is great. Got a little goose chilling on the island over there. The bridge, so they, the animals can get over. I think the the peafowl. She can, uh, they can cross over the bridge. If I yeah, pretty much most of this is traversable, so that's really great. Let's go and grab a closer look at these giraffe stalls. You can check the inside of them. As you can see, we've got some water out here for the giraffe. Come along here, for a staff gate. So can get the giraffes out like that, or a big old door, so... Yeah, these are supposed to be sliding doors, the giraffe can come in. I also have some staff area back here. Yeah, it looks a little, a little modern, but I mean, it's really, really hard to find uh, backstage stuff. Like, finding old zoo stuff is hard, backstage is especially hard. So I'm not too sure what they would look like. A lot of my backstage, I'm just guessing. But anyway, if we come along here, we have uh, some cat exhibits. Of course, they aren't occupied. These are all implied. Don't even have any arch-shaped cats or gut to piece cats to, cats to put in here. Just gonna have to imagine there's a blackfoot cat in this one. These two would have servals. This one had an African wild cat. And these two have caracals. So yeah, just gonna have to imagine them. We can go around the back and check the insides. Each of these have a interior. And it is a, a round building, so yeah, it's interesting to make this one. I'm just gonna phase through the walls because that's quicker. But yeah, simple, simple backstage stuff. Got some hay, some climbing platforms, a food bowl maybe, some platforms on the wall so they can jump up onto. Yeah, those are the these are the small cat exhibits. We come over here. We got our marabou stalk. These are this exhibit, hooking marabou, and this one over here with our wattled crane. These are just makeshift exhibits here. So the zoo just they needed to put these birds somewhere. Just erected some fences quickly. Put some tops on the fence so they don't stab each other. And yeah. Although, in my experience, the, the tarps sometimes don't really work, especially with the wattle crane. They'll still try and stab you through the top. 
And over here we have our polar bears. So, yeah, this is based on the old polar bear exhibit from the Johannesburg Zoo. And it really was as small as this really, really crappy setup. Uh, and unfortunately, like, I think the zoo actually kept the polar bears in this exhibit till like 1980 when that's when the new exhibit was built. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep my polar bears in here for this long, but that's what you have. You have that's what I had back in the day polar bears in a small little exhibit like this. Nowadays, there's no polar bears anywhere in Africa just because I mean, it's hard to set up a proper exhibit where they you meeting all their needs and also there's no there hasn't been any breeding success in Africa or most tropical areas for that matter have very rarely rare rarely bred polar bears so I'm gonna go inside take a look see oh very low ceiling in here and wow so the actual exhibit in Johannesburg Zoo it used to hold snowy owls for a period I think and uh, now it currently holds some red pandas so and it also looks different. They modernized it, like put chain link instead of the bars and that, so I'll probably do that in the future as well. Yeah, we got a polar bears. I'm glad to see that they can swim. They'll probably dirty up this water as well. I don't know if algae will actually... Yeah, algae will probably grow in there, even though there's not that much sunlight. I can at least make it brown. Yeah, that's our polar bear exhibit, our polar bear pit. Then if we carry along this way, you can see a, uh, some of our blue cranes. Yeah, and back there we have our wolf exhibit, which I think we'll go around to. Uh, yeah, we'll go around the polar bear exhibit and take a closer look. So if we come along here, we do have some jungle gyms. These look like actual jungle gyms you'll see in uh, in parks in South Africa today. Although the, the ones in South Africa today are probably like put there in the 80s or 90s, not as far back as the 20s. Yeah, got some seesaws, some uh, merry-go-round I think, that's what they call, a climbing frame, and a slide. And on that side we've got some swings and some more climbing stuff. Yeah, let's go take a look at our walls. Yeah, so this is based on a picture of an exhibit I found at Pretoria Zoo. And I think the one, the photo was titled Lion House, so it housed lions, but the picture I found had a tiger in, so it housed big cats, and I figured, I, I want to bowl that, but already have a lion and tiger exhibit over, over there, which we'll check out in a bit. So, put some wolves inside, why not? Yeah, so we've got three, I think these are all females. Grey wolves. So I think we'll... I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that for a little bit. I wanna check out these exits. So you can see, yeah, there's more of the, the children play area stuff. Yeah, so over here we have a... Uh, trying to... Jeez, I'm drawing a blank. These are small mammal cages. I don't know why they were so difficult for me to think of. Yeah, so first of all we have a civet. A lot of these are implied. A few of them I do have some animals standing, some art shape animals, but look at a piece animals I should say. But yeah, civet, got a ferret over here. Here we have an art fark, which uh, is implied as well. I know you have them in game, but I couldn't get the art fark to actually stay in this exhibit, so it's yeah, it's implied. These cages are too small. A lot a lot of the cages actually, like those small cat exhibits up there, I tried to get the phoenix to go in there but again they couldn't move around so yeah hitboxes are weird in this game so instead for the the phoenix I put them in this that this brick exhibit back here so they can at least move around yeah so even if we do get the animals of the exhibit um, there's a good chance I'm not gonna put them in because it's too small too cramped hitboxes are too big and they can't move this one we've got some raccoons some crested porcupines, or cape porcupines, my bad. Uh, yeah, so the raccoons and the porcupines were made by a labor something. Got a striped skunk, made by Drak. And uh, a stoat. We'll go check the, the backstage in a bit. 
but uh, for now let's just loop around we got a restaurant over here so yeah it's, it's outdoor seating and this is the like the main street of the zoo yeah, really nice planters and that and there's the entrance but yeah this is, this is the restaurant so you'd come you'll sit down someone will take your order and then there'll be a kitchen in this building over here no interior I'm afraid and uh, we have a very fancy bathroom area I'm not sure what I was exactly thinking when I made this but I was like yeah no, it's, it, it needs a bathroom so yeah you have the bathroom in here and uh, Oh, I actually put a toilet building, I didn't realize. So if I actually do let guests in, they'll all use this as a bathroom, but... Realistically, there'll probably just be one toilet, so you just sit here and wait. But it is a bit fancy for just a bathroom area, so... I'm not too sure I, um, why, why I did that, but... It is what it is, you know? And it looks nice, so... Who cares? Now over here, I'm trying to decide which way to go. Okay, let's show off this first. Over here we have a uh, animal ride. So this is where you would book the rides for the animals. Not just the elephants, but also a few others. Over here we have a ride station. So yeah, you would, as you can see, we've got some camels. So you would ride the camels. There's also horses, donkeys, and llamas that the guests can ride. The horses and donkeys aren't kept on this way themselves. We'll see where they kept later but the llamas they're on the other side of this it's fancy here but yeah we've got some Bactrian camels and I guess we'd ride them this house by the way I don't think I mentioned it but it's based on the camel house at London Zoo only I completely changed the materials it's made out of the, ch the colors and took away the clock tower but you can kind of see it if you like look at this all weird glass thing that's the that's from the London Zoo's camel house, so... Now, move along this way. See, that's the Cochiavery. There's a bathroom. I didn't highlight that before, but it, it's a bathroom, so, yeah. We've got a... Uh, this side, we have our... Uh, oh, zebras doing a... Oh, what? How? How does that, how does, how does that, what? You can traverse, okay, that's, that's weird, I didn't know that, that's, okay, okay, I'm not gonna argue, that's, uh, apparently they can, this is just supposed to be like a holding pen, but apparently they can jump the fence to get in here, that is weird, I don't understand how that works, but it works. Yeah, ostriches and zebras, like I said, this is one of the oldest, just, pens in the zoo. Yeah, we've come along here, yeah, I really like this view. I like the way we have our bear house over there, and we've got some, uh, we've got our two little shelters kind of framing it really nicely. I really like how this has turned out. But yeah, like I said earlier, on this side we've got some of the llamas, and we've got some goats. I don't see our llamas. We'll see them in a bit. Let's... Where's the llama? Oh, there's a llama. Yeah, so these are supposed to be the Alpine Goat mod made by JP2Bex. I'm, I don't remember the name. It's like J something, a number, and Bex or something at the end. I'll put it. I'll put it on screen. But uh, yeah, unfortunately the Goat mod hasn't been updated for 1.6 yet. So I'm just using the doll sheep as a stand-in for now. But yeah, as I said earlier, bear house, so this is based on the bear house in Pretoria, even got the same naming that the actual thing has. Today it serves as a cafe in Pretoria, but back in the day this used to have bears. And it's like a really small bear exhibit, which the bears notify me with the, these grizzly bears. They glitch out of the walls quite a bit because of the way the hitboxes work, so they scrape quite a lot. So in future episodes, pretty soon, I want to make a new bear exhibit. And recently, I also added in some uh, black bears. So these would probably be Japanese black bears. I know in the game they're Formosan, but Victoria Zoo did have Japanese black bears in this exhibit. So probably be one of those. Or two. Because there's two. Duh. Yeah, one thing that annoys me with this thing is that back 
when I first built this, the bears could actually fit through this thing. Well, the, the black bears can, because... Oh, I'm stuck. I don't know. Come on. Oh, I'm stuck. Anyway, let me just finish explaining. The black bears can, because they have a small hitbox, but... The grizzly bears, they are... Yeah, they used to be able to fit through that, but now they can't, because... Frontier changes the hitboxes, and... Nothing we can do about it, and now I'm stuck on the roof of this bear exhibit. Yeah, so anyway, this actual bear exhibit, I think the IRL one in Pretoria Zoo, used to have a, it did have a backside to it, I'm still not sure, but I think it had a backside because you needed a night room, and I'm pretty sure that each of these were like, didn't have a roof, like yeah, I made one that was open and one that was not, I think all of these just didn't have a roof, so... Yeah, I'm not sure if the actual building had a back state, back area or not, but the one I made here doesn't have a, a rear area. It's just what you see is what you get. And over here we've got some squirrel houses. So we've got some Prevo squirrel exhibits and a red squirrel exhibit. And let's actually go check the backstage area so we can access the bear exhibits. We can access these uh, small mammal exhibits. See here they all have a full backstage. House the I did try I have this door here, so like this does function as an echo exhibit, but none of the animals work can go in there. I tried to put the phoenix in here as well, but no no such luck. And yeah. Then of course restaurant access. Let's head back on over here, so... There's the wolf exhibit, and now we have some uh, cool gardening to go through. So yeah, this is a little flower garden. This is does have a few rare plants in here. This is a, a budgie aviary. Gonna have to imagine them though. Got no birds in the game, or flying birds. Well, we have flying birds, but you know what I mean, no flying mechanics. Uh, yeah, we got a few rare plants in this game that uh, I wanted to put here. So, someone commented in a video, a person named Velocity or Antec or Underscore, got a few names. Uh, they suggested why not make a, a garden with some extinct, well, plants that are extinct in the wild in South Africa. And I was like, that's a really good idea. So, a few of the plants are like that. So, we have the wood cycad. I think only two of them were, or three of them were ever found in the wild. So,. And I think they were all male, so all the ones you find are all clones of each other. So we've got one over here in our garden. And we've got some people rolling, roaming around in the flowers. Yeah, I like this garden, it's nice to walk around in. We've got some king proteas. Uh, these aren't a rare extinct flower, they're just a flower. Daisies. Too lazy to think of which act what actual daisy, so just, just daisy. A nice rock formation. I think this one is supposed to be, yeah, Erica verticillata, which is a, a flower that you found, I think it was in, in the Cape, in Western Cape, and it's extinct in the wild. But uh, yeah, some people did have them in their collections, so they're, they're, still, they're still around, and I think there, there, are, there has been some reintroduction attempts. Hopefully they they don't keep that extinct in the wild status for too long. Yeah, scaviola. Uh, oh, sorry, not scaviola. Scavola. Yeah, that's not a extinct flower either. That's a very common garden flower. Uh, salvia. Yeah, I use this. Uh, I think alpine currant. Oh, sorry. Wait, uh, alpine. Yeah, uh, sorry, alpine phacelia. It matches uh, lavender and. Salvia quite well, so I just use it as that. Then a uh, blue cycad. So currently in the time period uh, of 1933, this plant is not extinct, but I think uh, sometime in the 2000s, blue cycads were declared extinct in the wild. So that's why I got a blue cycad here. I've got a nice little table. You can sit in the shade of these pines. <clears throat> That's our uh, little garden. Let's make our way up here. So now we have our waterfowl exhibit. So if you've seen my uh, Grotteskia Zoo recreation, 
you would, uh, might recognize this. This is the... Uh, this waterfowl exhibit is based on the Grotiskia Zoo's old waterfowl exhibit. If you check my recreation, it is more... Well, since it's a recreation, it's supposed to match the actual thing. Yeah, the pond is a bit larger and the shelters I took some liberty with. It's a bit more different, as you can see, it's on elevated terrain. The actual one's flat. But yeah, got some animals from my waterfowl pack, got some black neck swans, cape teals swimming around, got uh, this one, muscovy ducks and some swan geese, change, I still didn't change it, I was supposed to change this and it said swan goose, oh my god, yeah, it'll stick for now, it's some guy that did the signs, he didn't know any better, clearly that was me, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we got some mute ones, some uh, mallards, and peafowl, of course, running around in each of these exhibits. The peafowl are free roaming, so they can hop in and out and go wherever they want in the zoo. And yeah, you can see each of these have a little seat behind them, so you can go take a sit. Walk up here. There's our polar bear exhibit, the giraffe stall back there. Here's our wattled cranes. And their little sleeping shed. And yeah, here we have the first big building I made for the zoo. Our lion, lion house, which later became a big cat house because it has lions and tigers now. So yeah, this these this is based on a blueprint that was supposed to be built for the Khrotiskia Zoo. The Khrotiskia Zoo, by the way, is an, a zoo in Cape Town which like shut. It opened in the 1930s and it shut down in the 70s, so yeah, this exhibit was supposed to be built, but uh, the blueprints never got constructed, so I, I just took that and was like, I shall fulfill the architect's dream and uh, build this exhibit, so yeah, on this side we got tigers, a couple Bengal tigers, on the other side we got our, our lions, of course. Now. <sighs> This game is being is weird with the climbing stuff because uh yeah you can see now they can't access this thing but as you can see there's that's weird we've got planks on the floor which like they can't climb on and that's how they used to move but, but the way the game works I don't understand if I just move a plank or something all of a sudden the tigers can now climb and like. I don't know, I didn't actually change anything, it's just the way the climbing string structure works, so... Yeah, this game's climbing is pretty weird. Like, I had to move this... Tiger... Boom, now they can climb. Now they can see all this, these planks I put on here to let them climb around. I really don't understand how the climbing things work in this game. I really wish they'd just tell us or... You know, fix that up. But, uh, yeah. Otherwise, it's cool. <clears throat> Same thing for the lions. If I move these planks, it would start... Now, yeah, see, now they're all stuck in this place. I have to move this plank. Now, now I'm sure they can actually get into the, the other spot. Let's actually check. Yeah, see the tigers? They now, they now can go in this side. It's weird, but this won't be here forever. I'll build like an actual proper exhibit the animals can move around in in the future. With all the animals as well, like the bears and the wolves, both big prop eggs. Eventually we'll have nice modern exhibits that meet welfare standards. Ah, see, he's coming. He's coming across the plank. Oh, no, he's sleeping. Sleeping in the way. She is coming, though. Yeah, the hitboxes are so big, are so weird. Like, I mean, realistically, a line could easily put through that, but because of the way hitboxes work, I do have to put those planks across so they can actually move. But anyway, onwards with the show. Let's, uh... Next base is our primate area. Well, kind of makes your primate area doesn't really have an end to start, because over here we have our jaguar. Uh, is was it a sheep? 
It's a heat. Well, I mean, yeah, this could be a jaguar or a leopard. I don't want to fuel that ignorance behind the jaguar and leopard, so I, didn't, I wasn't specific about it, but more realistically, it'd probably be a leopard, but I'm just saying it's a jaguar because, I mean, I'm sure they got jaguars as well. I would like an African Leopard, I think there's a few mods, I need to check them out. Yeah. Jaguar over here, and then now we're going to the actual primates. So. Come over here, we have some small cages, implied of course. Bush baby in this one. And a grey squirrel, I know grey squirrel is not a primate, I just needed something for yes, so I was like, yeah. Grey squirrel so it seems right. Got some uh, cool statues, monkey statues up right here. These exhibits, the the way these work, I think Johannesburg Zoo and Pretoria Zoo used to have exhibits like this, is that uh, the monkeys were kept on leashes. So they would wear like a collar or a harness, and it would be uh, attached to this post over here. And the only way they only have a small radius they can go around, they can go sleep up here, climb, but that's all they can go. So that's actually how they kept these monkeys in these open air exhibits. You tie them down and have them here. So got some rhesus macaques, some uh, vervet monkey, uh, and of course baboons. Most likely chakma. Uh, yeah, definitely chakma baboons since those are native to South Africa. And yeah, like I remember earlier, we bought our monkey nuts, so now we can take our monkey nuts and monkeys will do tricks and guests will throw monkey. Uh, nuts at them and the monkeys get their peanuts. A little um, shared thing, I'm not sure what this would be for but I found I saw it in a reference picture so I was like yep, recreating that. Of course a warning sign that they bite your fingers. If we go on this side, a few more primates. These exhibits are kinda based on the old big cat cages at uh, Joburg Zoo, only there it's a full circle, not like yeah, I just took, I divided into two and added a bit on the back. So, yeah, I like the design, so I went with that. This one, we got some mandals. I was considering replacing it with an or orangutan, but the mandals actually, uh, you know, they're able to climb up here and go sit at the top there. So I figured, yeah, i keep the mandals since they actually can use my climbing structures. Although now, they can't see it, but if I just do that and that. Now, yeah, now they can climb, or well. So, I really don't understand how the climbing structures work. Why do I need to move a piece for the animals to actually see that? It doesn't make sense, but yeah. Go back here, got some climbing structures in the back. Ah, I'm stuck on the roof, no! Frontier, please just like, make a Tejit Camp button, and make this so much less tedious. But anyway, over here we got some chimpanzees. Oh, they can! This one actually sees the climbing frame. I'm so proud of you. Ah, I'm stuck again. I don't know why I even bother with Tejit Cam. I just use should use drone cam. But I like I like the zoom. You know, I like the zoom. Anyway, uh, let's uh check out this chimpanzee exhibit. Um, uh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm gonna get stuck again. But any uh. Anyhow, the way this uh, exhibit works is like like with the lions, I had to put some planks on here, and at the top here as well. This like top layer is all covered in planks, so that way they can actually go up there. Because otherwise they they can't walk on there. Right? So like traversable areas, you can see, yeah, all climbable up there. So yeah, yeah, as you can see, he's running up there and he can sit at the top now. That's really cool. I like that. I really like that. So yeah, now I've got some. I need to try and get an orangutan exhibit because apparently they're a lot more. They were a lot more common back in the day than I thought. Johannesburg Zoo and Pretoria Zoo. I saw some old videos where you had the orangutan walking around. They even put like, I think on the baby they put a little suit on it, so it went and entertained the children. I need to try and get a, a, a crappy orangutan exhibit somewhere. Anyway, over here, this exhibit, uh, this ha this is where our hippo was in the past. It also had like some ostriches when they were raising their babies. But uh, for a while it was empty. 
and now it has some new residents, as you can see them pop over there in the back. Got some uh, grey, uh, sorry not grey, red kangaroos. But the reason why there's these logs up here is because we had the hippo in here, so keep it reinforced there. It's just too much effort to take them out, so just leave them. But yeah, there's our kangaroos. We brought them in, so that's that's one of the other new species. I think kangaroos and the black bears are the only new animals brought in for this update. We've got our zebras on this side as well. Let's see, ah, zebras, ostriches, very really nice. And we come to the final area of the zoo, probably my favorite area, the reptile area. First, let's. There's, there's another bathroom. You can see toilet, got the signs on it. Oh, I just remembered. For my last episode, I was supposed to build a bathroom on that side of the, ex the zoo. As you know, it's it's quite far away from these bathrooms. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's fine. You know, you can you can learn to hold it. Next episode, I'll build more bathrooms. But anyway, it's. Come on to our reptile area, which is, like I said, my favorite, so let's walk down these nice tile steps. Of course, no ramps because people didn't think about you know, disability access back in the day. So over here we've got some cape terrapins. I forgot to put a sign up for them. But yeah, these are supposed to be cape terrapins. You can see them chilling on the island. There's a couple in the water, I think, although, yeah, there you can see one. There's another. A bit murky. Over here we have our Dabra giant tortoise. He's still a baby though. Eventually one day he'll grow up big and strong. And we got a peahen that decided to give him some company. On the other side we have some leopard tortoises, which are also baby Aldabra giant tortoises, but we're pretending that they're leopard tortoises. Yeah. Over on this side we've got our so these are supposed to be American Alligators. I was using Nicholas Lion Rider's American Alligator mod, but it hasn't been updated for 1.6 yet, so we're gonna pretend these female crocodiles are alligators. This shelter, by the way, used to be an, an angular shelter, I think. Yeah, we had the Springbok over here, so... Yeah, the shelter has been adapted to hold the uh, crocodilians. Now I can come on. Here we have our snake pit. Now this is based on a snake pit that used to exist, the port in the Port Elizabeth Snake Park, and it used to be like a, a thing that was attached to the museum back then. And then later, the the museum and the snake park moved, the reptile park moved, and today it's now called Baywall, and it like doesn't have anything like this anymore. But back in the day, it used to. You can find a lot of pictures online. But uh, yeah, what you'd ha do is you'd have this handler. He would come in and like hold the snakes up for the people. Okay, and apparently, uh, like I, in one of the pictures, you had to sign up like this. He said the poison fangs of these snakes have not been removed, so yeah, these were still venomous snakes. I think someone commented that they may have been mulked, so that like reduces the danger, but still, a snake bite can be painful. And I'm not sure what kind of snakes they had. It's also hard to tell because the pic cut pictures were black and white. I think in the end I decided the snakes would be uh, forest cobras and uh, cape cobras. Yeah. yeah, forest cobras and cape cobras since one, one they don't, they kind of match the patterns in the pictures and two they don't spit at you, they aren't spitting snakes so obviously this is open air, you wouldn't want like a ring cults that would spit venom into people's eyes. Yeah, over here we have our rock monitors. These are Nile monitors, but I'm just pretending they're rock monitors. Over here we have a giant plated lizard and angular tortoise. Yeah, these are made with art shapes. I like this. These are plated lizards. This is my, my small tortoises. All very small animals. And over here we have our Nile monitors, which use actual Nile monitors as a stand in. That's it's more sunlight here. Yeah, he's sleeping over there. I think there's a second one somewhere. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, it is. That's cool. Oh, I was chilling. I like I like these pits. I really like how they turned out. This reptile area is my favorite. I think I think it's my favorite because like I was like before I even bought this, I was like, yeah, the reptile area is gonna be my favorite area because I don't know why I just like the reptile areas in the zoo. So I put I I, I put a lot of effort into this. Over here we have some uh, radiator tortoise. These are this made by ZZ, so. I think some red footed tortoises we just put on the workshop, so I might actually just uh, go in and replace these with some actual tortoises that can move around. And lastly, I think, yeah, last animal in the zoo is our crocodile. It's supposed to be a Nile crocodile, obviously, I'm just using the salty as a stand in, but yeah, big old Nile crocodile. These signs, also, by the way, were given to me by, uh, by Drak. So, like, they're a lot smaller than if you just use an individual sign. I like that. You can go around the back over here. See some backstage. Do they have a trade center in here? Yep, this is a trade center. And, uh, you can go down here. And the backstage, as you can see, this is, this, these were stable stalls, but. Now they have crocodiles and alligators. Yeah, that's pretty much all of the actual zoo. That is the Claytain Zoo, but that's not all I have to show for because there is an estate at the back there. Which I'll show in a little bit. We'll just we'll exit the zoo. No, had a nice fun day at the zoo. Yeah, so now we walk down the road and the entrance to the estate is over here. Right, so here it is, the Claintain Estate. So story-wise, the estate was built first. Like, you know, some rich guy that had the estate, then he had his own private collection of animals. Eventually decided to, uh, you yeah, know, let's open it to the public, Baldi Zoo. So yeah, but this is the estate. So these are some of the first things I bought on this map. So over here, as you can see, like I have done some more paving. This, like this, now we have a whole brick pathway going in. Before it was just, uh, just dirt, just sand. Same thing with here. I think, I think yeah. I don't remember what was paved or not, but uh, last episode I paved some stuff, but I forgot to show it. Now everything's kind of paved. Uh, yeah. So over here we have some uh, rondavels. So rondavel is just like an. The African structure, the round one with the thatch roof, the round roofing. Here we've got some here, so this is where like some of the workers would stay of the estate. Same thing here. This one I think is a bit fancier, so maybe it'd be a guest house. And we've got uh, this nice little pond with some uh, flowers and decorations up. And some of these are supposed to be strelitzias. I know they are lobster claws, but pretending they're strelitzias. Got some a pair of geese that are chilling here. Got some uh, Cape teals. I forget if these are Cape teals or Red Bull teals. These don't, they don't have the names. Uh, I forget. I don't know why I keep on forgetting the difference between the two ducks, but it's a, it's a kind of teal. It's one of the two. Uh, what else? There's floating trees in the back here. <laughs> I need to fix those. Um. Yeah, we've got we've quite a few gateways that like, goes into the zoo. So, like this one goes into the reptile area. This goes uh, to the zoo as well. There's another gate over there. I think this is this will all eventually be backstage. In the next episode or two, unfortunately, this whole uh, this garden area is going to be gone. It's going to be turned into like proper backstage. So we have holding pens and food storage and whatnot, holding cages, build an animal hospital here as well. Back there, we have the. Uh, yeah, actually, I, was, I, I forgot about this thing. I forgot about this. We have a big old barn up here. I think this is one of the, the exhibit episode I made this. is one of the most viewed episodes, which I'm actually kind of happy for because this is one of my favorite. Uh, for a while, it was one of my favorite things I built. Yeah, so just by the way, I forgot to mention, a lot of these structures use the Cape Dutch architecture. So like this one, this house over here, this one. This barn, of course, and the big mansion we'll see in a bit. And that architectural style is uh, 
Yeah, you like I said, cape dot. So you imagine you find it, you'd find it in the cape. What it has, it has these um. I forgot the names of these things, but like where the wall like comes up before the roof does, and has these fancy patterns. That's essentially what. That's the basis of Cape Dutch. There's probably a few more stuff that uh, I I can't think of. I'm not I'm not too educated on architecture to speak about, but it's the basis of it. it has these fancy gabions? What's it called? I think it's called a gabion or something like that. I forget. Yeah, this is a little barn. So this is where the as I mentioned horse, earlier, horses and donkeys, you keep them in here. I mean, I tried to put a zebra in here, but uh... I mean, just to see if it would work, but no, they can't, they cannot fit through these doors, so... This is all for show. Yeah, we got these gutters down, and so that the horses can actually come up, you know, if you put some planks down so they can walk over. Yeah, really, I, I still like how this turns up. This could be a bit smoother, but it was already hard to make the actual indented circle like that. This open. Um, what am I? There we go. Uh, yeah, stable stalls all along here. And over here we have some a storage one, a whole bunch of random junk and whatnot. And this oh, this would have also been a storage. Like, clearly I didn't put an interior in here. I forgot about that. But yeah, that's the the horse stables. You can see we've got like these. This is just holding yards. There are some other, you probably let them uh, go and graze along the estate if you want to. Same thing with the uh, these pens, these would hold cows and probably sheep as well, I think mainly cattle though, and oxen. Because back in the day we didn't have cars, so you needed something to pull the wagons, and you would either use your horses, your donkeys, or your oxen. You can see here some wagons up here. But now we have cars, so it's a bit easier to get around. Yeah, you'd keep them in here and then, like in the day, you just let them go onto the estate and eat the grass there. You also have a little, uh, what do call it, like a corral? So like I guess if you want to train the horse or something, you can use this, have them run around in circles. Why do I keep, ah, I keep clicking on stuff, go away, go away. A floating tree again. <laughs> I have to get about the trees. And uh, another holding pen. I haven't done, I haven't done a lot of detail on this road. Ideally, it would be paved and that, but since I don't come to the side of the zoo very often, I haven't put a lot of time and effort into this road just yet. And yeah, along the the side of the map, as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of these pine trees. I imagine there was a period in time where this land was used as a plantation, so a lot of these trees are left over. There's a few of them, yeah, over there you can see some of the trees, that's like kind of a forest. So that's when this place was used for timber, but then it turned to livestock and now it's just a, uh, well half of it is a zoo. Anyway, let's get back on the road. I can show you the final building. We'll take the path up to the big old mansion, the Plaintain Estate mansion. So this is based on the Grotteskia estate mansion. And yeah, I think did a good job. This is like one of the first things I bought in game. I think it's still it's pretty decent. I could touch up some areas, make it more detailed. Eventually I do want to add an interior to this. I think like eventually the zoo will take over the entire estate. And I want this to be a restaurant, so when that comes out I'll touch it up, add some more detail, but uh, yeah, for now I just put some more path I'm up here. I do eventually need to pave this, but since this is uneven terrain, I <laughs> it deterred me for now. I did add some cars though. Yeah, this is the, uh, the estate. Like I said, it is based on an actual building that exists IRL. Well, yeah, I think the, the West Wing I took some creative liberty with, because I couldn't find much reference to that. But the front and the back, we'll see. As you can see, no interior, but it still looks nice. Come along the back side, some gardening, and yeah, I also really like how this looks from the back. 
and I'll throw some reference pictures so you can just see how it is. Uh, the, yeah, as you can see, uh, I use concrete pillars here. The texture doesn't quite match the limestone, so I'll fix that up eventually, sometime in the future. But uh, yeah, got a, as you can see, the actual building does have a lot of fireplaces. That's why you see all these chimneys. Got a got a washing line over here, so you can hang your clothes. Come around the back. This actually doesn't look so bad. Nice little uh, alley type thing. Yeah, I still really like this house. Even though it's old, and I probably add more detail if I built it now. It's still really nice, and it's gonna stay in the zoo forever. I will modify it so it looks even nicer, hopefully. And yeah, at the back, I added this uh. Big old fig tree. Now this was before the South America pack came out and gave us some fig, like actual pieces to make your own fig tree. So I just smushed a whole bunch of acacias together. I should probably redo this one and the fig tree we saw earlier at the uh, in the park, so they look more realistic, more detailed. And I also want this one to be a lot bigger. I think this is going to be like a like a really old and really big fig tree. So I should probably redo this so it looks bigger. It's been like uh, 30 years or so since I plant this, since I put this down. Imagine it has grown in that time. And yeah, yeah, we just got some uh, crops growing, some veggies, so you know you can feed yourselves and I guess now the animals in the zoo. An old house house. And yeah, that is the Clain Tain Zoo. So exit over here. See, like I mentioned earlier, there's some trees back here and there, probably it was timber. And then we got a whole big ridge at the back. It's not, like, not very detailed, yeah, I just used the terrain brush because once we come here I'll add more detail, but for now, this will do. Yeah, got a whole bunch of plants here. In case you're wondering why it's like this whole dense plants on these trees as well as on the side of the road. I was going for like the biome the zoo is based in is the thicket biome and this is how it looks like you know when it's just left wild and untamed a lot of the areas will just have uh, covered with just bushes and small trees and yeah, that's this is like exactly the kind of vibe you get from there. Of course yeah people came in so they cut away a lot of the plants let the animals in planted a bunch of their own trees, which is why I've made eucalyptus and pines and oaks and whatnot all around, but yeah. Yeah, just one more thing I wanna uh, end on, I think. Come back here at the lion exhibit. Got a little staircase at the back, this is something the actual blueprint had. You can come up here and, boom, take a final view at the zoo. Yeah, I'm not in Tejit Cam anymore, so I can't zoom. That's why I like Tejit Cam, but yeah, from up here you have a good view of the zoo. I don't imagine guests would actually have access to here, but uh, we do, so. Yeah, that's the Claintain Zoo, the, the estate, and like the little city behind there. So yeah, that's that's the, the tour, the 1933 tour. We'll probably do another one like 20 episodes time. I'm hoping it'll look very different to this, because you can actually see the way time changes. Hopefully, like if this is your first episode, you'll maybe you want to go back to see more details, like watch the old episodes, or download this map for yourself so you can see it. And then I think the the episodes themselves, I give a bit more story. Like yeah, I just said this is this, this is that. I think the elephants they came from India. The only one story I actually explained was the hippos. Uh, yeah, so the elephants they came from India as well as the tigers. The lions were like built as part of the private menagerie before it went public. What else? Imagine these black bears came from Japan as a gift. Yeah, I just wanted to switch to rain quickly because I hardly see this thing when it rains. And the rain, the weather in this game looks so good. The rain looks so nice. Ah, oh, I love this, and I have upgraded graphics. So I don't think I've actually seen it with my new graphics card. I really like this. I need to, I need to do the, the weather stuff more often. 
Hey, another thing I just realized I forgot to do. Not with the weather, but with the... City does look nice. The rain, but uh... Let's have it a rainy night. Ooh, that looks nice. Because all these windows have lights. I put lights on the cars. The tram even have lights, so... Oh, this looks nice. The, the, the weather and the lighting in this game is quite nice. The only thing, I do need to add a lot more city into this detail so it actually has light. And it just looks like, it's just a whole bunch of buildings. I need to add like bins and benches and... Eventually we'll have people, guests walking around. I don't have guests now because, I mean, they don't wear the right clothes. It sounds a bit silly, but... In this time period, people will be wearing like... Six layered dresses and 12 piece suits. Well, I'm not sure if that's the terminology, but the Planet Zoo guests didn't wear that. They wear shorts and have neon colored hair, so I'm not, I'm not letting them in for now, but in the future, this place will actually look really nice at night. I can't wait. So, yes, you may remember at the beginning of the video, I said I was going to show you the plan I actually wrote, like for the rest, to like. Do this zoo, I think it was right after I made the waterfall exhibit, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna need an actual game plan, so this area actually comes out, you know, it's a proper structured zoo, I'm not just building random stuff, which I mean, I still feel sometimes it is, and that's something for the future for me to fix, but uh, yeah, a lot of the, the area here, we just switch over, as you can see, this is the plan I wrote up, so I think the lemurs was already here, and the waterfowl and this this exhibits over here those and the big cats they were all there already but everything else I had to like kind of plan out so a lot of things kind of stayed as you can see like while well, the hoofstock exhibits was already there the reptile area kind of stayed there I did have some gardening in front of the waterfowl exhibit put some bird cages and uh, yeah birds so that's owls now the uh, did make an aviary over here, although it was a little bit up there and bigger. And yeah, a lot of the stuff actually did change, so I was a bit ambitious with some things, so like, yeah, I was gonna put hyenas and mammals, and I figured, you know, over here, there's not really, it would be weird if I just put exhibits here, so just kept them as the exhibits they were. A lot of the these things, I, um, I overestimated the size. So like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I have llamas and goats and then camels, although immediately after writing this, I was like, yeah, that's a bit small for camels, but yeah, hoofstock, hoofstock, warthogs, those didn't come this entire space with just llamas and camels, and I did switch the bears and mammals, so it just kind of shows how the plans change, like polar bears were supposed to go here, but the polar bear exhibit I wanted to build, it needed a slope, so instead I built it up here, I did add stuff. So like the small cat exhibit here and the hoof stock exhibits that are all the way at the back here. It just kind of shows how the, the plan has changed. There's a few more changes in that but I don't want to get all into it. But yeah, another thing also, Animal Hospital. I actually think um, timeline wise it works for me to build that later. So next two episodes I think, within the next two episodes, you can probably expect that. But yeah, it does show how the plans change quite a bit. Um, yeah, funny thing about this rhino, elephant, and hippo, I was planning to have elephants over here, but I built this elephant shelter in another world, and when I put it over and put it at this angle, the elephants actually couldn't get inside, so I had to move the elephants over here so they could actually, you know, go inside the night room. Yeah, so hitboxes in this game are weird, but I, I think it turned out fine, actually. You know, I could put the um, this ride station on the side of the exhibit, so it actually I think would have been more awkwardly placed if I had it the elephant exhibit up here. So that's a, a happy accident. Yeah. So even though this uh, the original plans has changed from what was actually built quite a lot, I'm still gonna do another whole planned area because it is good to have a well for me at least I like having a little a game plan so I know what's gonna build, where's everything going. I already have some ideas, I haven't thought about it too much, I know I want to extend the stockyards here and try and 
We designed these shelters and fences so it matches some more references I have. Uh, I do want to redo, well not redo, I want to build the new bear exhibit, I don't know where though. Based on the one that Johannesburg Zoo used to have. And at the back, yeah, I know for sure. Yeah, I'm going to build a Pretoria Zoo style lion and tiger exhibit. As well as probably some other animals. Maybe move the wolves here as well. But yeah, that that's what's coming up. And uh, as for the rest of it, I still need to plan up because this the zoo is going to expand all the way back here and then come also all in this estate. Like I said, it's going to engulf this entire estate. This barn will probably be a farmyard area. It's going to be a really big zoo. Because currently it's about a... I think I actually wrote it down here. Yeah, yeah 11.02 hectares, probably a bit more. But yeah, going to be a really nice big zoo. And if you have any ideas, share in the comments. I cannot promise that, uh, what have I clicked on? I cannot promise that it will come through because I'm going to have to stick to what's realistic for South Africa and also just what I like because no, it's, it's a project that I'm doing. So I want to make sure everything I built is something I actually like and would like to see. But if you have any ideas, I might incorporate it like the, the rare flowers, like, you know, the Erika's that we have over here and the, the Cycad. The extinct Psycat. That was something someone commented and I really like that. But yeah, I'm gonna plan plan out the future of the, the Claintain Zoo. So I don't know when the next episode is gonna come up. But like I said, I do have a new zoo uh, project in the works. If you watch my Crotuscare Zoo recreation, you would know that I'm gonna start a zoo project like that. I have done quite a bit of work, but it's still, it's still a little bit away, so I'm not sure when that episode will come up. Plantain Zoo isn't going anywhere, don't you worry. I love this project too much. Anyway, thank you for watching. I don't know if you watched the whole video or just certain areas, because it is a stupid long video. I went, I don't know exactly how long. I looked back at the recordings and there's like an hour and a half worth of footage. I can probably trim, trim some of it down, but it's likely going to be over an hour, especially with this added segment and me dragging on. But yes, thank you so much for watching. I really... Hope you enjoy the series, the zoo, this all the architecture and stuff. Like I said, if you want to check it out for yourself, you can check the description on the Steam Workshop. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.